being here today. What a great looking crowd. Yeah, everybody except for you. I'm sorry. No, I'm just kidding. They all look great. Everybody looks beautiful. I'm really glad that you're here today. And um, thanks for, I'm, I'm Pastor David. I'm privileged to serve as a senior pastor here, so I have the chance to welcome everybody on behalf of the whole staff and our ministry team. I want to start by saying uh, thank you for a great weekend last weekend. Our, our Heritage Weekend was just phenomenal. We had a great harvest festival. We had an, a great homecoming service. We served breakfast to 300 people. We had worship with about 300 people. Um, we had a wonderful yard sale and silent auction. And all told, we raised about um, a little more than $17,000 together. And so, yeah. Um, which, was, which is just great. We're taking about, oh shoot, 75% of that. I've got too much going on here. 75% of that we're putting towards retiring our debt. And the other 25% goes straight into our outreach ministries. I think the best thing of last weekend in my mind was that I, I, what I saw was a community of faith living in grace. Um, there was so much love all weekend long. Such a positive feeling. So, ma so many people serving, uh, helping each other witnessing to those who are guests on our campus. It was tremendous, and I couldn't be more proud of our church. Amen? Amen. Just really exciting. And look, if I wanted to mention also our, our life groups, if you haven't already to check out one of these catalogs, I hope you will. You can grab one on the way out. And in here you'll find all of kind of our life group opportunities. These are smaller group opportunities where you can get involved and, and get to know people and, and learn and, and uh, be, just be surrounded by friends in the faith. So I hope you'll check that out. There's a ton of great groups to, um, to be a part of. Now, if you would, I want to I'll ask you if you would, let's pray together as we prepare for our message. God, thank you for today. Thank you, God, that we are gathered today and that you are faithful. You are here with us. You love us. You've got things planned. I appreciate that you give me a chance to be a, be a messenger this morning. And I do pray, God, that you would let me preach today. Let me teach today in a way that's totally unhindered and unbelievably empowered. I pray, God, that you would um, help each one of us today as we gather to be able to hear what you are saying, to be able to receive what it is you want to accomplish in our lives, and let us just continue, God, to just be in your presence and, in a, and to be aware that you're here with us. And I just thank you, God, and ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. So today I want to continue on with our series on Mission Possible. We've been looking at this for a few weeks now. Our mission if you choose to accept it, and we have chosen to accept it, is to be witnesses of Jesus Christ. To be witnesses of Jesus. That's, that's our mission. If you and I are Christians, we're followers of Jesus, our mission is very clear. Be a witness of Jesus. As a community of faith, the reason we've been gathered together is for that purpose. Be, so we can be witnesses for Jesus and so we've talked each week a little bit more about what that means. We're trying to sort of un unpack it, explore it. And today we're going to talk about what it means to share our story. To share our stories of what Jesus has done in our lives. Today it's all about, it's all storytelling today. Well, you like storytelling time, right? Stories are good. And I'm not talking about the story of how you know, when you were younger, you walked seven miles barefoot in the snow you know, to get to school. That's, I'm not talking about that story. I'm talking about the story of, of what Jesus has done in your life. I'm talking about the story of what is, what is different now in your life because you have met Jesus. What's different now than what it used to be before? Right, that's the story we're looking at today. I realize that telling, the, telling our stories of faith is, it's, it's, it's challenging. Some, for some of us, it comes Maybe more easily, some of us were just petrified of the whole idea of talking about something so personal. There's a chance that we'll mess it up, right? That we'll stumble and bumble around and, and have a hard time getting it all out. That's a possibility. There's also the, the greater risk, I think, is that you and I just won't tell our stories at all. And, we'll, we, and we will be silent. 
right? And somebody out here in, in your orbit of your life needs to hear your story so they can come to know Jesus. And the great risk in my mind is that they will continue to not know Jesus because you and I remain silent. And so t- today we want to ex- this, this think together, what does it mean? How do we go about telling our stories? It's, it's really important. Romans chapter 10, verse 14 tells us this. It says, how, how can they call on one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And I'm not, I don't think it means just preaching in the sense of what I'm doing today, but preaching is all of us sharing our stories of what of what Jesus has done in our lives, right? I don't want somebody to not know the grace of God in Jesus Christ because I didn't have the guts to tell my story. Would you? You don't want that. We don't. None of us want that. So here's here are a few things, a few reasons to begin with why why your story matters. Number one, your friends are interested in your story. Your friends are interested. Like the best witnessing, the best evangelism. It's going to be relational. It's, it's going to be us sharing with people we know. Friends at school, family members, folks that, we've, that we have some kind of relationship with. They're interested in, in, in you, and so they're your friend, and they're certainly going to be interested in what's most interesting to you, which is your, your spiritual life and your journey of faith. They're going to be interested in that. Number two, they can relate to it. Uh, you know, you're, instead of it being some high and theological language of doctrine, and it's, it's your story. It's, it's your experience, and they can relate to your experience. That's why you're friends, because you can relate. You've got you've similar lives, similar work, similar school. You can, you can relate to each other. And number three, probably my favorite reason, is your story is really hard to argue with. Right? So you can argue with my theology, You can argue with my doctrine, but it's really hard for you to argue with me when I tell you about how I have seen Jesus at work in my life. Try to argue with me about that. Right? That's a whole different story. One of the things I'm I'm learning is I'm journeying with uh, cancer, and most of you probably know this, I've been a couple of months now of, of journeying into a new territory of what it's like to live with, with stage four lung cancer. Um... One of the things I'm learning is that God's all over this. I mean, I'm seeing Jesus Christ at work in my life, opening up doors for me, making connections for me, uh, bringing people alongside of me, showing me generosity, giving me hope, giving me healing, blessing my family, blessing my marriage, blessing me, blessing my church. I see God everywhere, and I've got a lot of stories to tell, right? So I'm telling them. And I'm especially enjoying telling my stories to my unbelieving friends. Right? How do you argue with this? And they ask, they're interested, right? How are you doing? What's it like? And I tell them about how I see Jesus opening up doors for me, making a way for me. And it's really hard to argue with that. And I'm praying, God, that you might use this, right? Use it to open up someone else's eyes and heart to, to who you are. And then the last thing, your story could change somebody's life. So, so our stories are really important. Friends are interested. They can relate to it. It's hard to argue with. Your story can change somebody's life. Now, here's the, um, the, the heart of the story. Every good story is like it's got a sort of a plot line, right? A thesis or something that holds it all together. Well, if you're going to tell your story, which I think you want to, and you want to tell your story well, then the first question you have to answer for yourself is, what difference has Jesus Christ made in my life? We've got to be able to answer that. What difference has Jesus made in my life? So that's the heartbeat of the story. That's, the, that's kind of what holds it all together. What difference? What, what's different now because of Jesus than it was before Jesus? Right? And it's going to be, everybody's going to have a little bit different story. Maybe very different stories, but for me to tell my story, I need to know what, what difference has Jesus made in my life. Now, so let's think about like a diet. You could tell me about the diet you're on, and you could say, well, Pastor, I'm on this diet where I just, all I eat are donuts. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be a cool diet, right? It's a donut diet. Or you could say, all I eat, are, all I eat is meat. It's a carnivore diet, you know? 
Or you can tell me it's the Jenny Craig diet or the Weight Watchers diet or whatever you want to tell me, but you know what I really want to know? How's it working for you? What difference has this diet made in your life? Have you lost any weight? Are you feeling any better? What's, what's different? What's the before and after? Right? It's obvious, right? Same thing with our stories of faith. You, you tell me, well, I, I believe in Jesus. Okay. I believe in Jesus too. But what I really want to know and what others want to know is what difference has Jesus made in your life? Right? So when you look at this passage today from John... Um, this long, oh, so painfully long, gruelingly long, horrifically, this horribly long. Oh. Y'all are still living though, right? When you look at this passage, what we find is, um, this is a great example of, of telling the, the difference Jesus has made in your life. The man who was born blind, he doesn't go on and on about his theology or his Christology. You notice that, right? He didn't get all go on a theological, you know, journey. He doesn't talk about how he grew up in the synagogue. He always was a member. You know, his parents took him to the synagogue every week. He doesn't talk about whether he prefers con a contemporary or a traditional synagogue, <laughs> right? He doesn't get into well, I'm I'm conservative or I'm liberal, right? Or I'm evangelical, and pro or I'm pro progressive or I'm whatever. He doesn't get into, into all of that. What he, what he has to say is that what he shares is the difference that Jesus has made in his life and it's as simple as it can get. I was blind, but now I see. That's his story. I was blind, but now I see. What's your story? That's his story. I was blind, but now I see. And that's really... You know, hard to argue with, right? Really hard. They tried, right? All the folks who questioning, they were trying to argue, but it's pretty hard to argue. The man was blind, now he sees, right? So what's your story? What we find is in, in the Scripture, as you look at the New Testament, especially when it's all the stories of Jesus, we see all these, these stories of the difference Jesus has made in the lives of the people that he encountered. For, for example, in, in John, the Gospel of John, chapter 8, we learn, of, we're, we meet a woman who is caught in adultery. All right, so think about what, what's, what's her story. You can go back and read this passage you want. And think about what's, what's her, what might her story be. I think her story might sound like this. I had reached such a low point in my life. I was filled with shame. I had been caught in an incredibly an incredibly embarrassing situation and my regret nearly suffocated me. I was being criticized and judged by everyone. And then I met Jesus and he gave me a new start. He didn't condemn me. He showed me grace. That's her story, right? Story of grace. Or then what about Zacchaeus in, in chapter 19 of, of the Gospel of Luke? Here's another story. Zacchaeus is this rich, 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 rich young guy. Here, this might be his story. Well, I had fallen into a pattern where my life was totally wrapped up in money. Totally. The grip of greed was so strong that I couldn't break free. It distorted every relationship that I had. But then I met Jesus. And you know what? Jesus set me free from the tyranny of greed. He taught me how to care, how to really care about people, especially the poor. He unhooked me from unhealthy habits, and he got me pointed in a new direction. Might be his story, right? Zacchaeus' story. What about, what's your story? See, Jesus is still changing lives in this moment. Been changing lives as long as you and I have been alive. So what's our story? If we've been, if we know Jesus, we've been, we've been following and loving Jesus and trusting Jesus, then we've got a story to tell. So what is your, what's your story? Maybe it's something like this. I was, I was self-destructive, but now I'm healthy. Or I was, I was fear-stricken, terrified, but now I'm confident. I was despairing, but now I'm hopeful. I was trying to impress everybody, 
but now I'm a servant. If you've met Jesus and you know Jesus, you've got a story. Let me tell you, I want to tell you, I have a lot of stories to tell about Jesus. I could tell lots of different stories. I want to tell you one that today that's probably kind of the heartbeat of my journey with Jesus. And I'm going to tell it to you in 101 words. That's very impressive, by the way, for a preacher to do anything in like 100 words. That's why you don't see me on Twitter. That's too, that's, that's really too hard. Here's my story. <clears throat> Before I met Jesus, I was very insecure. I didn't think I was good enough. I feared failing. I tried to be perfect. And I worked really hard to prove myself. Love seemed conditional. I needed lots of affirmation, and criticism was like a stake through my heart. But when I met Jesus, he gave me confidence. He assures me that he loves me forever, unconditionally. He shows me how much others love me. He assures me that I am good enough and that he's pleased with me. He's with me, and he helps me grow. I'm a work in progress but I'm confident in Jesus Christ. Okay? What's your, what's your story? You know, what's your story? All right, I'll give you a couple of God, just a few short guidelines for telling your story, and then I'll give you the mission, your mission for the week. <clears throat> your story should be brief, not long-winded. Don't put so much in your story that it makes it hard for people to to, to, to listen. You don't want to be telling your story of Jesus and have people pass out or roll their eyes back in their, to the back of their heads. Right? You want to give people time to ask some questions. You want to think about this more like an elevator speech than a novel. Right? So, make a brief. Number two, your story should be focused. Have one plot line, right? Yeah, there's a ton of things Jesus has done in my life, in your life, but let's focus on one thing right now. The one thing that maybe is the most important for you. And tell that story. I was blind, but now I see. I was insecure, but now I'm confident. Focus on one part of the story. One, one plot line here.